Hello everyone and welcome to Christmas Tag Tuesday. This is week two and I am a little bit excited about today's tag because I'm going to be creating a sort of pop-up three-dimensional tag for you today and by pop-up I mean we're going to do some creative die cutting with this. I've got the page open here for the main product I'm going to be using. It's the Home for Christmas Scrapbooking Stamp and Thin Cut Set and this is a really cute set because you've got a base layer for each size of a Christmas present and then you've got overlay to stamp on top of that to give some decoration to them and then with the thin cuts you can cut out the bows and everything. So I'm going to show you what I've done to mark these so that it makes it a little bit easier to put them together. This set is actually from the September October 2023 catalogue which has recently just retired but it is still available to order at the time of me recording this. So I'm going to keep this book open because this actually helps me align things up. When you see images in the catalogues unless it's otherwise marked they're at the real size so when you look at these and you've got the thin cuts and you've got the stamp sets it's a little bit hard sometimes when they're on the block to work out which way everything goes so I have gone through and I have labeled my actual stamp carrier sheet I've just used a permanent sharpie for this and I've gone from largest to smallest so this is number one number two and number three and then I've also marked one two and three on the coordinating overlays with the pattern that goes on this and I've got all the stamps on blocks at the moment and to help me work out what goes with what and what is the right way up I've actually written on the back of the photopolymer stamps themselves and I've also written on the thin cut so this is why I did the one two and three with just lines because I have marked the actual thin cut so I've worked out which is the top section section of this and just put a one there and this is the bow section so all of these items go together and I can work it out just by looking at the stamp image and lining it up over top of the printed image in the catalog and it's exactly the same with the thin cut because this has got the rounded edge on this corner so everything here goes together and I've put a little line underneath each of the actual stamps so that I know which way is up because when you put them on blocks sometimes it's a little bit hard to work out which way is the right side up and I have done this for each of these gifts so this is number two and this is number three and that's why I've done the lines for the markings because it's just a little bit hard to write the number one, two, and three on this small little surface area that you've got on this small little area that you've got here for the thin cuts. So this for me worked really, really well. So I know that this one is number two. I've got this one on a block as well. This is number two and it goes around this way. I actually ran out of two by two blocks. I'll just move these aside for the moment and show you that it's exactly the same same for the smallest one. I've labeled that number three and that's the overlay part. So they all match up so that when I go to use all of these products together, I know which way the right way up is because with the thin cut, I've marked it at the top and with the stamps, I've got the line underneath them here. Now, when you actually do this with your stamps, sometimes you might get some residue from the marker and I'm going to show you how I remove that. And this is how I clean my blocks normally. I'm just going to bring in a little bit of hand sanitizer and squeeze just a tiny amount you don't need terribly much onto my block and then I've got some paper towel and I can just clean my block this is very good for cleaning off residual ink from stamp pads anything like that at all and then what I would do after I've cleaned my block nice and thoroughly, you can see that the marker came off super easily. So I haven't damaged my block at all. And then I would just go away and rinse this block under some lukewarm water and then dry it off to remove the residue from the hand sanitizer. But you can see now my block's all nice and clean and ready to use. So this has really helped me when I've been stamping and lining things up and making sure that the thin cuts all go around the right way. Especially when I'm creating a gift tag where I'm going to have partial die cutting done with this so that I have the base of my tag here and then I'm going to bring in these gifts and I'm going to put them across the top edge of this tag and I'm arranging these so that they're not sitting all perfectly in line. I want them all at a little bit of an angle and a little bit of fun and I'm 
going to do some partial die cutting into this. And just for your reference, if you're wanting to do something like this with this particular set, this piece of paper here measures three and a half inches in height and five and three quarters in length. And the reason why I've done that is because I'm going to feed this through my die cutting machine and I want it to be a little bit less than six inches so that it will feed through easily. So I'm just going to adhere down these thin cuts. I might leave just a little bit more space between them. And then I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. I'll just move all of these pieces aside for now. And I'm going to keep these on the magnetic sheet so I don't lose them. I'm going to be doing some layering. So these are going to be cut directly into the tag, but the only piece that I want to cut is this top section here. I don't want to cut the whole piece out, and this is why I've done it at five and three quarters, because this will fit across. I'm just using my old cuddle bug here. This will work in any machine that will take six inch plates. And then I can bring down the top plate so that anything that is above here where the plate is, that is going to cut. And then this part here is going to remain intact. So I'm just going to run this through my cuddle bug and then I'll be back to show you how it looks. And you can see why it was very handy to have the markings of where the top pieces of these gifts are so that I knew which way to put them onto the tag that I'm going to create. So I'm just going to put these back on the carrier sheet. And this is what I have left with. So I could do a little card like this if I wanted to and fold this back so that these elements pop up from the card. And I need to cut away this section here. And I'm just going to use my scissors. So I'm just lining this up on my Versamat and I'm just bringing in my T-ruler so that I can get things all nice and straight here when I do my cutting in between these elements. And rather than guessing, I'm going to draw a pencil line in between these areas of the gifts so that I can trim those away with my scissors. Now I've gone up a bit from what I want to actually cut and this way I can go just a little bit below and then I don't have to worry about rubbing out the pencil marks. So you can see I'm just cutting away each of these sections. and then snip away the last bit. And I've got the base of my tag here. And now I need to make this look like a tag. And this tag is going to be in a horizontal format. So what I wanna do is cut off two little triangles from this end here. So I've cut a triangle off there, pick this up, turn this around, put it down in this corner and that's going to be my guide to cut away the other piece so that it's nice and even like this. And then while I've got my pencil and everything out, I'm going to put a hole in the middle here. So once again, I'm using my Versamat. I use my Versamat so much with things like this. It really does come in handy with finding center points. I've got my hole punch and I've got the largest hole for this one. And then I've punched my little hole and now I'm ready to do some stamping and decorating of this tag. For the one that I'm making on camera for you, I'm going with what would be considered fairly non-traditional colors. But I do have another one to show you where I have used more traditional colors and my red is actually paprika. So I think you might be a little bit surprised when you see this because this has more of an orange hue, but when you see it stamped, it takes on a red tone, especially with these two other colors. I've chosen these colors and I'll show you what I do with my process. And I go through and I do a whole lot of like little swatches to see what I think would work well together. So this is a more traditional palette as well, Jade, Limeade and Candy Apple. I think that would look really good together. I wanted to make a fun, bright one on camera with you today. Limeade, Capri and Periwinkle, they look quite good together. If you want a more subdued sort of look, Rosemary, Periwinkle and Limeade works well. And also Limeade, Royal and Capri go fairly well together. So you can see the common theme with these ones is Limeade. I was wanting to bring Limeade in because I do love that green and I wanted 
wanted to see how it would look with these other colors. This is something that I do quite often when I'm doing combinations of ink and this small present stamp is quite good to get a bit of a color block to see what the colors would look like together. So the other thing that I'm going to do because there are overlays with this one when I stamp them I'm going to test to see what strength of ink I want to have with each of these. So I'm going to start with Rosie and ink this up because there are overlays I know that I probably want to do second generation stamping and just see how things look on top of that. So this is the base layer and then I'm going to get the overlay part and sometimes with these sort of things you can go over top with the same generation of ink just to see what that would look like. So I think what I'm going to do is see what it looks like if I do second and second generation. That does stand out, but I do want a little bit brighter. So what I'm going to do now is just go first and then second generation and do first generation stamping over top of that. And I quite like the look of this, but I want to deepen up this rosy just a little bit more. And because our blocks are clear, I can stamp off and then line up and go back over top and stamp again. And I like the depth of that more than just the second generation underneath. So that's what I'm going to do for Rosie. So let me stamp those ones out now while it's fresh in my memory and I know what I'm doing. I need to actually keep this here because I'm going to stamp off and then I'm going to line this up and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing, just personal preference. I want to deepen this up a little bit more, but I don't want it as strong as first generation. And then I'm going to bring in the pattern for the paper and stamp that over top. And these patterns are designed to give a 3D sort of look to that. And these little gaps here are going to be the areas where the die cut is going to go. So that I'm going to cut with silver glitter paper. Now this is going to be the base layer, but I also want to bring some other presents at the foreground of this and layer this up a little bit. So I'm going to do exactly the same stamping onto this piece here so that I can die cut this out. And then I'm going to keep going and I'm going to practice with these two inks as well. Now I've just dug this out of the recycle bin because this is what I was playing with with the first tag that I made, which I'm going to bring in in a moment for you. So you can see I've tried with first generation, second generation, and then first over top. Some of the inks you don't need to do double stamping for. And as I said, it's just personal preference. And if you're not comfortable with trying to line a stamp up over the top in exactly the same place, then I would just go with one inking of it. But you can see there's quite a bit of playing and working out what colors are going to work. You can do a whole heap of stamping and work it all out before you actually take it to your projects. So now I'm going to come in with Limeade and go through the same process. So for Limeade, I'm going to use the middle size gift. I'm going to do first and then second generation. And you can see the second generation here is quite pale. But before I decide whether I'm going to stamp over the top of that again, I'm going to bring in the pattern. And I've done the first generation stamping over the top of the base here that was second. And I think there's enough definition with this pattern to go over top. Now these present boxes, they have a texture to them. So it's not a solid amount of color. There is texture on the stamp itself. So when you stamp it, I'm just gonna stamp this one again so that you can see. You can see that there is a bit of texture to this. It's not giving you one big solid block of color. It's giving you light and shade. And that's really, really clever. And I love how that looks on images like this. And I know that I want two of these mid-size ones. So I've stamped those. So as I was saying before, it really depends on the ink color that you're using whether or not you need to do first, second, third generation or some double stamping. So you really just need to have a bit of a play around with the colors to see what you like best and what works best for the color. And before I forget, I've got two to cut out to layer up on this tag. I also need to stamp one on this base layer as well. And this is why marking my stamps and the metal dies makes this so much easier to do when you're working with layered stamps. So I've got Capri ink here now. I'm gonna stamp the base up in first and then second. 
And now I'm going to bring in the overlay. Now you do need to get your head over this. So I'm just editing that part out because I know that you don't want to see the back of my head. But this really does help that the blocks are see-through and we've got photopolymer stamps. And I think what I'm going to do for this one is try and do what I did for Rosie. So I'm going to stamp this in first and then second. And then I'm going to repeat that process. And I like the little bit extra depth that I've got with this. And I think this looks better than having this paler blue behind there. I think the paler blue with the second generation is going to get a little bit lost. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to stamp off, line this up and do second generation stamping and do exactly the same, stamp off, line this up and stamp again. And then I'm going to come in with the pattern piece and line that up over top and then I can just stamp that down. And then I want another one of these to build up my little scene of gifts here. I'm going to have a stack of gifts on this tag. And that's all the stamping that I need to do for the gifts. So I'm going to die cut these pieces out and I'm also going to die cut the little ribbons out of silver glitter paper. You can see that I've gone ahead and I've die cut the pieces that I'm going to put over top of here to create a layered look to this and also how cute these sort of look popping up from the tag. If you just wanted to do this one layer and put a big Merry Christmas piece here, that would look great as well. But I wanted to have it so that I could have these pieces coming out like this and creating a little bit more of a layered look to this tag just to give it a little bit more dimension. Now I've adhered the bows and the ribbons on here. I'm going to do that on camera with you so that you can see how it all looks when you put this together. Obviously I don't want to put any glue on this top part here so I'm just going to apply it to the top part of the ribbon that goes across the top of the gift and then just a little bit down each side you don't need much. You can do this with your dot roller and that will work quite well. Now this one's fairly easy because you've got dedicated lines here so you know exactly where to line this one up. For the medium sized gift, the longer piece here, as with all of them, goes to the edge of the gift. So on this one, it goes to the edge on the left. On this one, it goes to the edge on the right. And all of the strips go to, all of the ribbons go to the bottom of each gift. You can see with this one, this is the corner front of the box. So it's like having the ribbon coming on the front and then on the side and I'm lining it up with the bottom of the stamping here and just placing that down. And then I do exactly the same thing for this gift here, the small one. So you only need a little bit of glue. This is why I love the Belly Art glue. One, it's not sticky on my fingers at all when I wipe it off and it does dry clear and with that precision applicator, it comes out in a very, very fine line, which is perfect for this type of work here. So how cute do they look with their little ribbons attached to them? I really do love this stamp set and I haven't used the gifts before, so I'm loving playing with this. Now I've used two different heights of foam tape here. There is the thick foam tape, which is a higher height, and then there is the foam tape, which is lower. So the ones that are at the background have just got the 2D and they're going to sit here and the ones at the foreground have got the 3D. Now this one is going to come I think over just a little bit but you can see with the 3D one I have left room on each side so that I can nestle it between these two gifts. So I'm actually doing this so that I hide that little top section there and I'm loving how that's looking but I also want to add a Merry Christmas. Now there were two options that I looked at. One is with the glistening alphabet, which is in the current November, December catalog. And I really love this script type lettering and you can line it all up so that it all matches across and joins up. This is not the right color. This is stamped in jade. Or I could use the evergreen card making workshop and use this Merry. Now I've got another one that I have stamped here and these of course have been fussy cut out. There are no thin cuts with this, but I can put that over and see if I want to put that there. And I think it's just a little bit too big. I actually like this one here so I'm going to flip my Versamat over and I'm going to stamp this and show you exactly how easy this is to line up. 
I'm going to try this with Capri ink and see if I like that. I think the Capri will look nice and balanced coming across here because the Capri is on either side. And I don't really want to do it in Limeade as I already have three elements and the Rosie is quite strong. So I'm just going to see how this looks. So all you need to do for this one, there's no real right or wrong with this because it is a script type font. So you just put down your first letter and then with the second one, you come in so that it overlaps where the tail ends on that first letter. And then you can keep stamping across until you do your word. I absolutely love alphabet sets like this. And the fact that we can do script writing with this one and make any word that we like is really, really clever. And then my Y at the end. So very quick and easy to do and now I just need to fussy cut it out. I'm just going to hold that up before I do anything and I really think the Capri is going to work well. Before I actually do the fussy cutting though, I'm going to stamp Christmas. Now this word is actually from this evergreen card making workshop but I know you've probably got something in your stash if you don't have this one where you do have a small Christmas or you could just leave it at Merry. So I'm just going to use black ink and because I've already pre-cut one, I've got that as a bit of a guide to work out where I'm going to put Christmas. So I'm just holding that in place and I'm going to take that away and stamp that down. I don't need to apply much pressure. I am on my spongy side of my Versamat. I don't want to smoosh the word out at all because it is quite fine. And the other thing I want to do is just dress up the outside of this tag a little bit. So I'm bringing in the Spectrum Noir metallic paint marker. Any silver marker that you've got, if it's got a lovely wide chisel tip like this, will work. I'm just going to make sure that that's flowing. And before I get too much on here and it gets a bit tricky to navigate, I am just going to go around the edge of this tag. I am going to put a silver glitter tag topper here. And for that, I'm going to use the buildable tags, thin cuts, which you saw me use just the other week with week one. So now all I need to do is cut out the merry and adhere that there. I'm going to put foam tape underneath certain sections of it so that it pops up and then I'll just use liquid glue underneath the top section so it adheres to these gifts. So here's my finished tag. I've added some sequins. I've applied the Merry here. I've got some foam tape underneath the lower sections and some liquid glue under here. And I've also added some little beads and trinkets onto the tag here for a little bit of fun. And when you turn the tag over, you can see that it's all in one piece. So it's a nice cohesive look. You can recreate this tag and just adhere this back layer directly on top. But because there's only a tiny bit of each of these bottom parts of the gifts, it's more stable when you cut it into the base of the tag here like I've done. This is just a little bit more stable and a bit stronger with the tag which to have it all cut into one piece as the base layer rather than just having a tiny area here especially with this small one just to adhere here to bring up this base layer. I love the dimension on this tag and adding the little trinkets works really really well. So I think these lovely fresh colors work very well together. I'm going to bring in the ones that I did with Paprika acorn and jade and I've done a gold colorway with this one so you can see with this and this comes out as a red on this I know when you look at paprika it's got the orange tones but when you pair it with jade and acorn it does take on a red hue and this is actually stamped in paprika as well so you can see it comes out as a red hue and using the gold glitter paper for the ribbon I think dresses this up beautifully and I've got some trinkets on this one as well the same sort of trinkets here little bells and a star and I got those from AliExpress some time ago but you may be able to pick something like this up in a local store but if you order from AliExpress just be aware that it does take some time to ship to you and all the elements came in various separate lots when I ordered them but I really wanted to have some of these to put on my tags for this year because I think by adding these little charms or these little trinkets it just adds a little bit of fun and whimsy to them. So I hope you've enjoyed week two of my Christmas Tag Tuesday. Next week, it's going to be about getting a lot of tags done in a short amount of time. I hope to see you next week for another Tag Tuesday. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. As always, happy crafting and bye for now.